So hey everyone, my name is Travis Montague, founder and CEO of Holler. This is Conversation Nation, and I'm joined with Rich Dennis and James Andrews, two entrepreneurs, businessmen that I've had the pleasure of knowing for most of my career. Uh, and they've been great mentors, guys that I've admired from afar. Um, and I'm excited to have both of them on to talk about the times today. Sure. Well, good morning. First of all, you know, just you've been a boss since day one. So it's been great to watch your trajectory. I'm the founder of Authenticated and we operate uh, somewhere between uh, a venture studio uh, and a consulting firm. Um, we do a lot of strategy for growth stage companies. My name is uh, Rich Lee Dennis. I'm the founder and CEO of um, Sundal Brands, um, which uh, uh, with brands like Shea Moisture and Newbie and Heritage. And then uh, also I've had the good fortune to uh, uh, to be the uh, founder of Essence Ventures, which um, acquired Essence from Time Inc., Essence uh, publication from Time Inc. about two and a half years ago now. Um, and um, also the extremely proud uh, founder of uh, the New Voices Fund, which uh, was set up to um, invest in black entrepreneurs. Um, we're blessed to have um, investments in, 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 ex in, in ex extraordinary entrepreneurs uh, doing outstanding things like you, Travis. So thank you. No, I mean, I, I again, I'm excited to have both of you on for many reasons. One of the things that, um, prompted me to resurface Conversation Nation in this format for this conversation is because I think the world is just crazy around us right now. And, you know, we see what's happening with Black Lives at the front forefront here. Um, there's certain people, there's businesses and, and the broader community trying to catch up. And I think it's important that we give out, we, we as a unique cohort in the space, uh, Black business leaders who have been through the journey or go, go, going through the journey currently to share some perspective so that people get it right, right? As, as, the, as the world is coming together. All of the terrible things that we've seen in the past, you know, three or four weeks here are things that we've seen every day all of our lives, right? This isn't something that's new to us, um, but it's new, it's new to other communities. And I'm encouraged by other communities um, seeing it, feeling it, and, and, and stepping up to it. Um, but it's on us to hold those communities accountable. I feel much the way Rich does. And I think if, if you talk to Black people, we probably, many of us are um, feeling feeling the same way. Um, I think this, this, this moment that we're in is for, for young people. It's for, it's for the folks black, white, green, yellow, Puerto Rican nation who are marching um, out, out in the streets because they'll they'll look at this time period, this Kairos moment, and, and because everything is recorded, because everything is on the internet, they'll look at this time period and they'll actually judge you as a leader and you as a company on what did you do um, in the month of May in 2020. And I've actually eliminated the word allies. Um, I've been kind of in, in my history lessons and looking at organizing frameworks of the Black Panther Party and lots of other amazing organizations. And I've sort of eliminated allies to replace that with comrades. Because what I really want, I want comrades. Which allies is light commitment. Comrades means if we get in a fight in a bar, I know that you're with me and I know that you're there with me. So I've been tasking myself, um, you know, looking at myself as a leader. I've also been looking at, you know, all of the, you know, different folks that have reached out and wanted to yeah. step up and do something and challenging them to look at a deeper commitment. What do you guys think corporate America is doing wrong? Right? Why aren't we seeing convert? If, if everybody has stated diversity inclusion programs, why haven't we seen the type of conversion that suggests equity? If you really want to do something about the problem, what you do is say, what are the inherent systems in my organization that prohibit? right the development of black people in my organization so let's be very specific about how do black people rise up in your organization how do they get recruited how do they get trained how do they get evaluated how do they get developed how do they get mentored how do they go from one you know what's the path to, to, to go up through the organization 
you know, if we had comrades in corporate America, they do this for white people all the time. They, they, they groom leadership in this sort of, hey, run a division, you know, run it like your own thing, you know, um, and even go outside and start your own business and then we'll bring you back in, you know, like they do this all the time. Like that's a game that's played. Like you go start that and then we'll hire you, you know, like that's played. Um, so if we had true comrades and true wealth creation partners, um, there would be those kinds of conversations, you know, where, you know, the CEO of this company puts some bread in on the cap table at a company that you start because you spin out and like those kinds of games happen in the 1% world. To anybody who's watching who is, comes from that side, um, I would just say this is a marathon. This is not a race. Do we think that there's a world where there, there's a recipe for designing a corporate culture and designing its DNA to be truly agnostic and, and equitable? If, you, if that truly, if you want to answer that question of what equity looks like, uh, it's truly an opportunity to reimagine the guts of the organization. Um, and I think being a startup is, is a great time to kind of reimagine that. But it really starts in the, in the what I would call the back halls of, of, of where, the, where the game is really being played, right? Where like, you don't know about this deal because you're not in the boys club. Changing corporate culture that has existed for, you know, 20, 30, 50 years uh, in a corporate environment that has existed since this country started is a very difficult task. Building culture from the ground up is our best chance of having equitable cultures. But it will, the shift in corporate culture will start with us building businesses that are mindful of it on both sides of it and give it, you know, 75 years for it to take hold. So as we wrap up here, um, I mean, this whole conversation was awesome. I think if you could just give, if you could just give us our viewers one, leave them with one thought, what would that be? From both of you guys. I'm on a rocket ship to Wakanda. I'm putting people in right now. Would love to have you on this ride with me, um, but I'm gonna get to Wakanda with you. So, um, and I say that with all the love. Really, and in, in, in the way that you just articulated, I'm going with or without you. An ally can choose to come along or not. Yeah. A comrade is going. That's right. Right? A comrade is going regardless, right? Um, and so, 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 so I love, I love that word, and I'm, I'm going to think about that a little bit more because that's the difference. Yeah, no, thank you both. I mean, I think there's so much you guys have said that's worth, that that's worth people taking a step, a step back and reflecting on. So thank you guys for sharing your your words, your thoughts, your experiences, and I hope you guys, I hope you guys find. Uh, success in all the efforts that you guys are doing. I know that you guys are doing a lot around this, these, these initiatives in different ways. And you know, I'll take a lot of these learnings back as we continue to drive our strategy at Holler and figure out our, not only for our business, but our place in society going forward. So thank you gentlemen for your time. And I hope you guys stay safe uh, during these strange 2020 months ahead of us.